a big warm welcome to Nov the Church. It is so lovely to have you with us. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe and share this link. As a church, it is so important that we share the Lord's love and light to as many people far and wide. If you live local, please do come along to the church. We share in such a wonderful time of worship and fellowship each week, and there's nothing better than welcoming in new members to our Nova Church family. If you are local but cannot make it to church, then do get in touch. We have a fantastic pastoral team that would love to come along and bring church to you. Maybe you're watching the link today and live further afield and haven't yet found a church. If this is the case, we would be more than happy to help find you a local pastor who can help you in your Christian walk and share God in love and truth. I pray that the message has truly blessed you today. Have a wonderful week. God bless. Some time later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Amen. Thank you, Ali. I'm, um, I'm just gonna quickly introduce Joe. Um, He's going to be preaching for us today. For those of you who know him, I can't say anything. Absolutely blinded you. I do it by faith instead. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, for those who had the privilege of being with us a couple of weeks ago, um, he preached for us, uh, for, the, for the congregation, and it was, it was a treat. It was an absolute treat. It was pure gospel. And um, I know we'll have much of the same today. Um, I was speaking to your dad last night, and um, hmm, absolutely cut from the same cloth. Um, absolute uh, stalwart for the gospel. Um, you cut, you cut them all, that entire family, and they bleed Jesus. So it's my absolute delight to to welcome him to preach. I'm going to pray first, and then we're going to get into it. Father God, Lord, we are so undeserving of the 
calibre of men that you have brought to this church. For the preaching ability, even in some so young in the faith, um, Lord, you have truly anointed and gifted our wonderful preachers. And Lord, we are, we are eternally grateful. Um, and Lord, I pray that we would not take it for granted, but with every morsel of gospel bread that we are given, Lord, we would consume it and savour it, Lord. And we would pay attention. And it would teach us and it would edify us. And just like our example from Joe, we would go out and we would fish. Um, he's teaching us all to fish, not, not, not those that uh, dwell in the oceans or the rivers, but the lost, the lost that are out there. So Lord, I thank you for this man and I pray that you would anoint him and that you would be with him and that he would trust solely on your word and on your grace, for it is sufficient for us. In your son's precious and holy name, I pray. Amen. My kids, you can go off to Sunday school. I don't think I can give a better instruction than Owen did. I <laughs> don't think I deserve that, but I'm very grateful for it. And uh, I'm very grateful to be preaching the word to you again today. Um, uh, it's a great pleasure uh, to open God's word. But before I do that, I need God. So uh, let me pray so we receive his word. Lord Jesus, would you please pour out your spirit out on me? Help these words not to be of me, but of you. Help me to be a mere tool, a mere weak vessel to deliver this message and deliver it, Lord. Open the hearts of this congregation to receive it, Lord. Let your word be spoken and received and your name glorified today. In your mighty name I ask. Amen. Amen. So for the past three weeks, I've been doing teens and I've been doing the talks for teens, very graciously with Harriet. Um, and uh, just five minute talks, but the first one I did went pretty well. And then the second one I did, it went pretty well. And then the third one, when I wrote it, I was like, this is the bee's knees. This is a talk to give. I was proper chuffed. I was like, this is amazing. So I started giving the talk. It was going well. I was about to lead to the big finale, the big point to you know, smash the doors. And then I said my favorite line to say, I said, God knows everything you've done, thought, and said. And then I was about to go to this big point. And then one of the girls in front of me went, what? <laughs> sort of like, yeah, yeah, God knows everything you've done and thought and said. She went, everything. I was like, yeah, he knows, he knows everything. She said, well, I'm screwed then. <laughs> I said, no, 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 the point is that God knows everything you've done, but he died for you anyway. Out of love. And she said... Well, I don't need him. I've got me. I was a bit taken aback and I finished the talk. But whenever the world looks at Jesus' sacrifice, there is no empathy, sympathy, there is nothing. There is just hate. But when we tell the story of Abraham and Isaac, you get this uncomfortable feeling. Abraham had to kill Isaac. Isaac had to die on an altar, be sacrificed feels wrong, it feels uncomfortable. Well, how does Abraham see it? In verse 2, he is told by God to take his son, his one and only son, Isaac, whom he loves, and go to the region of Moriah and sacrifice him there as a burnt offering. His one and only son. 
What does he do? Early the next morning, Abraham gets up and saddles his donkey. He gets told one of the most difficult things you can ever be told to sacrifice the one and only thing that you love. He doesn't question. He goes. He saddles his donkey the next morning and he goes. That is faith. That is true and utter faith. Then in verse 4, it says, On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. That means Abraham was walking with his two servants and the son he is going to sacrifice for three days. Three whole days. Three days where he could have turned around. Three days where he could have said, you know, I can't do this. The agony of walking with a son who he has to sacrifice would have been unbearable. The pain to sacrifice his one and only son whom he loves. And poor Isaac, walking along with him. I mean, I've had difficult car journeys with my dad, but that would be something else. <laughs> and then verse 5. How does, how does Abraham see this? Is, is it a test in his, his mind? Is it a, a punishment? Well, verse 5. He said to his servant, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. So he's faithfully followed, and he's, he's arrived at the place to sacrifice his son. And he says to his servants, we're going to worship, and then we're coming back. It's important to know that in Hebrews 11, verse 17, it says, By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had received the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead, and figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. What does that mean? Abraham, by faith, knew that God would deliver him. By faith. He still walked. He could have turned back. He could have doubted. But by faith, he walked. He is doing this all by faith that God will deliver his son Isaac even from death. And he calls this worship. Worship can be called what we did 10 minutes ago where we stood up and we sang the praises of God together as one. And that is beautiful worship. But worship every day is following the word of God by faith. Giving everything the Lord has called you to give. It's unusual to call this worship, but that's what Abraham calls it. Giving his son, following the Lord's word by faith. And that is what we are to do. We are to trust in the Lord when times are hard. We are to follow his word. We call ourselves believers and don't even believe. We are to trust in the Lord through everything and he will guide us like he guided Abraham. We are to trust like Abraham. We are to be as Abraham in this moment. And then he takes the woods and he places it on his son. And now Isaac's question, what's going on? He says, we got the wood, we got the fire, but where's the lamb? God himself will provide the lamb. His faith is still strong. Abraham is about to kill his one and only son. But he has faith that Christ will deliver him. It's getting closer and closer. Surely his mind must be tempted to think, well, God, he's, he's not here yet. He's not going to deliver. I'm going to be left alone. I'm going to have to kill my son Isaac. And I won't be delivered. No. Nope. God himself will provide a lamb. This is faith. I lack faith every five minutes and fail to worship him and follow his word every single day. But not Abraham. Not on this day. Then they reach the place where Isaac is to be slain. He reaches out, he grabs the knife to slay his son. Wait, wait, wait! 
I thought God was going to deliver him. It's like that moment in Princess Bride where his grandpa's reading him, his grandpa is reading him this story. And in the story, the bride's in the waters, and there's eels swimming about, and the eel's about to attack the bride, and it's all going to go wrong, and the boy goes, wait, 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 this isn't supposed to happen. She's supposed to survive. He's, he's supposed to be delivered. But Abraham has faith. So much so that he knows God will deliver Isaac. And guess what happens? The angel of the Lord, at the very last second, says, Abraham, Abraham. He says, here I am. And the angel of the Lord says, do not lay a hand on the boy. He is delivered. All that faith, and he is rewarded. His, promise, his promises are true. And Abraham puts his faith in God and he delivers. And it's the angel of the Lord who says this. Well, who is this angel of the Lord? He comes up many times in the Old Testament, but most notably in Exodus 3. In verse 2 it says, There the angel of the Lord appeared to him, Moses, in the flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush. Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is a holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. So the angel of the Lord is God. He calls to him from within the bush. And Moses is so afraid to look at God that he covers his eyes. We believe in a triune God. We have God the Spirit. Can't be him because he's invisible. We have God the Father and God the Son. So who is it? John 1, 18. No one has ever seen God but God the one and only who is at the Father's side and has made him known. It's not the Father. It is Jesus. The angel of the Lord is Jesus. And yes, Abraham has shown faith and that is a big part of this passage, and you could probably do many sermons about that. But I want to talk about what this passage is all about. And it is all about Jesus. And he himself is in this story. Isaac asking, where is the lamb? Abraham answers, God will provide the lamb. And who is that lamb? The lamb to take away the sins of the world. Isaac was the sacrifice carrying the wood that would burn him. Jesus carried the cross that he would die on. Isaac journeyed for three days. Jesus journeyed for 30. What is the difference? Jesus died for you. So that you might have life. This is 13 and 14. Abraham looked up and there in a thicket he <coughs> saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of the sun. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. Our sins have a price to pay and that price is death. So God the Father, 2,000 years ago, gave His Son, His one and His only Son to pay for our sins. For your sins and for mine. 2,000 years ago, He provided us a lamb. A baby. Innocent and sweet. Feeble and meek. A lamb born to die. Lived to suffer. All for you. So that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. And his name is Jesus. But I want to look at a minute 
of the father. We thought the horror that Abraham would have had to go through, the agony of walking with his son to murder. But he was delivered. He didn't have to kill Isaac. But our father in heaven, he did. Think of losing what is greatest to you. Maybe it's a person, a possession. The thing you love the most. Think of having to give that up willingly for filth. Give it up willingly for utter filth. God the Father gave His one and only Son for you and for me. Filth. He went through agony watching his son be abused and beaten and nailed to a cross. And he went through all of that for you and for me. Even though I have betrayed him, I have hurt him, I have failed him, I have sinned against the Lord God who loves me and he knows it all. He knows everything I've thought. He knows everything I've said and he knows everything I've done but he still sent his son for me. And yes, he died. A painful, awful, horrific death. But, on the third day he rose. The Messiah and your salvation. He is God, a suffering God, who did not have to suffer, but suffered still for you and for me. And today, he is calling out, Abraham, Abraham, will you answer? Abraham follows God's commands by the next morning. I pray that by tomorrow morning, every single one of you will have put your faith in Christ. So that you have been saved from eternal damnation. Do not wait. James 4, 13 to 14. Come now you who say tomorrow or today we will travel to such a city and spend a year there and do business and make profits. You don't even know what tomorrow will bring, what your life will be, for you are a bit of smoke that appears for a little while, then vanishes. You are hearing the good news of Jesus, of salvation. There is no greater news. But this may be the last time you hear it. Will you reply? Will you put your faith in him and say, here I am. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. What is the reward? What is the reward for this great test that Abraham goes through? Genesis 15, verse 1, The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. In John 1, the word became flesh. So this is Jesus again. The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your very great reward. He is our shield, who we put our faith in and gather behind, who protects us. <coughs> but he is also our great reward. Salvation is just the way we receive it. Our great rewards is God the Son and eternity with him in heaven. That is why we are saved. We receive Christ. We are united with him in heaven for eternity. That is our great reward. Abraham's question was, will you sacrifice Isaac? The question today is, will you receive him? Even after everything you've done against Jesus, he wants to spend eternity with you. Think about the things that you've made yourself forget. Because they're so horrifying. Those thoughts, those acts, those words that are so evil that you just can't bear to think of them. He knew you'd do that. He died for you anyway. 
then He wants to spend eternity with you. Even though we fail Him in faith, even though we fail Him every single day when we pray, but He knows that we don't really believe He's going to answer. He still wants to spend eternity with you. Abraham, Abraham, I have provided the lamb for your sins. Abraham, Abraham, I have died for you. I have forgiven you. Abraham, Abraham, I love you. Will you hide like Adam and Eve? Or will you say, here I am. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, I know that we all fail in faith. And none of us are like Abraham, who went to the very altar, who held a knife to his son, but knew you would deliver him. Lord, help us to walk in faith in everything. To know that you hold it all. To know that you died for us here. Lord Jesus, please help us to know that we have the God of the heavens and the earth with us every day as you send us out. Help us to live by faith. If anyone in this congregation does not know you, Lord, let today be the day of their salvation. In your mighty name I ask. Amen.